So tell us about this story and what inspired you to write it. It sort of goes back several years and, and there's a bit of a sad story, um, which is that we lost friends um, of ours in a car accident, much like the one that Mia's in. And it was uh, our, our friends and their two children. And by the time the news came to us, they had all died. But we heard that one of the children had lasted longer and he had been medevaced to a trauma center. And that was a piece that really kind of tormented me for years because I loved this little child. He was very close to me. But also the idea of him alone in a helicopter and the rest of his family gone. And so I, I wonder, did he know what happened to the rest of his family and did he choose to go with them? And that was just part of my grieving process that I thought about for a really long time. And then eventually, you know, I didn't. I, it, it, I got over it as much as you get over something like that. And then about eight years later, I woke up one morning and there was Mia, 17 years old, dark hair, very, very serious, very focused, and a cellist which was a surprise because I know nothing, or I knew nothing about the cello and I was not a, a musician and I didn't have a background in classical, but there she was and I knew she was going to answer the question of, you know, what would you do if you were in that in-between state and you knew that this terrible thing had happened to your family and you could choose, but as it pertained to her. Did you ever imagine this story being translated into a, a movie at all? I did not ever think it would be translated into a movie. I didn't even think it was going to be a book because even though it was a story that I felt I really needed to write and the, the act of writing it felt really good and like this was something I needed to get out, it just didn't seem like a viable novel to me. And at that point I didn't have an agent, I didn't have a publisher, I had published a couple of books but they hadn't gone anywhere. So when I saved the file on my computer, I saved it as why not? as in like, this is probably not gonna ever go anywhere, but why not? So I didn't think it was gonna become a book. And then people were into it, it became a book. But then I thought, no way is this gonna become a movie because of the way that it was structured. It, it goes back and forth between the, the flashbacks, which are not chronological, and so much of it takes place in Mia's head. Mm -hmm. um, so I had, you know, and then all of a sudden it was going to be a movie and, and thank goodness for really gifted filmmakers because they managed to take this thing, which I thought, no way, and turn it into this, this beautiful film translation of the book. Yeah, it was beautiful. How involved were you with the film? Mm -hmm. I came aboard as an executive producer and I like to think that I was um, both an ambassador, that my role was an ambassador between the readers and the fans who I'd been hearing from at that point for like five or six years. So I could say, I could tell the filmmakers like, hey, you guys know that this line, sometimes you make choices in life and sometimes choices make you. It's like a touchstone in the book. It's the most quoted. People get it tattooed on themselves and the scene where it is um, in the book is not in the film. And when they found that out, they, they found a really beautiful way, a place to put it in. So things like that. Or when they were making some of the changes on the script, they would give it to me and consult because I, I feel like I know these characters. I've been talking to them in my head for, for six, seven years at this point. I know them so well. So that was really, you know, the, the, my involvement. Now, how was it working with RJ? So I met RJ, um, well, first I Googled him when they told me about him, and I, I thought that somebody who did documentaries on Dick Cheney and Anna Wintour are two of the scariest people I can think of. Like, I thought, okay, the, the man's got balls. So, <laughs> and then of course there was Nashville, and I knew he had the whole music thing. And then we, we met for um, coffee, and he started talking to me about his idea for the, for the film, and he showed me visual palette, and the way he was speaking about it, he understood it in such, on such a deep and cellular level. He understood the emotionality of it and the music and the relationship between me and Adam and between me and her family. And at that moment, I knew after sort of five or six years of stop and starts, I'm like, it's gonna happen because the reason it hasn't happened yet is we've been waiting. We've been waiting for Chloe, for our Mia, and for RJ to be the director. And I was right, he was, he was the exact person to make this film. He was amazing. And when I saw the final product, I love to be right. It's one of my favorite things. I was like, yes, I was right. That's great. How important was music in this story? I didn't realize how much music I had written into the book until people started reading it and talking about it. And then I realized, of course, like they're musicians and they, they talk about music a lot, but also even the way that Mia describes things is very musical. 
So one of the things I love about the film is the actual being able to see that music come to life, 3D. I love Adam's band, sort of seeing them go from this sort of like little Portland indie band. You see them, the rise, and at the same time you see the parallel rise of Mia with her cello, just as a little Mia sort of practicing her etudes over and over again, to her Juilliard audition scene, which I have seen the film several times now, and that scene makes me weep every time. It's just so moving. So it's, you know, and then there's all the, just the music in the background too. And then of course the beautiful bonfire where you have the rock and the classical come together. The music is just, it's gorgeous. And it's one of the ways that film elevates the book so much. That's great. Uh, one last question. The, the, the story itself raises a, a pretty good question for people young and old, I, I feel. So what do you feel that the message is out of this film? Or do you feel there is a message out of this film? I don't know that there's a singular message out of the film, and you know, I certainly wouldn't sort of build a message in. I mean, I, RJ has talked about how um, we are who we love, and I think that that's true, and that there's all different kinds of family. And, and the, the movie itself, as well as the book, I like to think of as a series of love stories. Of course, there's me and Adam, and me and her family, and Mia and music, and her friend Kim. Um, but what I think the real message is is that all of that and the story that that creates will hopefully give viewers this emotional reaction and it's from there you have those kind of moments of clarity in your life and and you it allows you to kind of take whatever message you want and just sort of think about your own life in in more clear terms that's what i hope so it's really kind of when you have that experience where you go into a film or a book and and you leave a slightly different person than you were when you started and then that's where the message comes in because it's very, very individual and personal to each person. True.